it's Connie from Faff Designs. Welcome to my furniture painting YouTube channel. I am a furniture painter and I'm also a brand ambassador for Dixie Bell Paint. Uh, a few weeks ago I did a stained effect on some pine bedside tables and a lot of questions were, I had a lot of questions asking what that stain would look like over oak. I don't know, it's quite a new stain out. So I picked up this from a charity shop, it's a little oak bureau, it's in really good condition, so I'm going to strip it and then we're going to stain it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is take off the original handles because I am going to use the original handles, I'm going to keep them original, just clean them up and replace them once I've finished staining because they are really pretty and they suit the piece and then I am going to start where I always start and give the piece a really really good clean just because this piece is being stained and not painted it doesn't mean that you can skip the cleaning part because what can happen is as you're sanding that old varnish off if there's anything on the surface of that, like a cleaning product or polish or anything that's been put on that surface um, from fingertips or anything like that, what you can actually do is rub that into the grain of the wood, which will then prevent the stain from taking evenly and may cause patchiness. I'm also going to clean the inside of this piece as well because I am going to do something with that. I'm not going to leave it as it is because that would probably look a little bit weird. So I'm going to be doing something with the inside. So I'm making sure that I'm giving that a really good clean. Once everywhere had been cleaned, I then rinsed it off with clean warm water. So once everything had dried, I then started sanding that varnish back. I'm using my Festool sander. If you want to see a little bit more about that sander, I'll link a video in the top right hand corner of the screen now and you can go and have a look at that video. It's not very technical, but it gives you a little bit of information about the sander itself. And I'm starting with an 80 grit paper just to get rid of the bulk of that dark varnish and I'm going to use that all over and I'm working in the direction that the grain is going. So obviously on the front panel there you could see me working left to right and on this side panel you can see I'm working up and down and that's working with the grain of the furniture and that means that you're not going to cause any damage to that grain. Obviously we're going to be staining this piece so we want the integrity of the wood grain to remain undamaged and we want it to look pretty we don't want to cause any damage to that wood grain and make any sort of deep scratches and the other little tip with sanding is to make sure you're changing your sanding sheet um, regularly because that can cause issues with swirl, swirl marks um, and that can also obviously lead to damaging the wood grain as well As you can see, I took all of the drawers out and sanded those separately and then did the carcass and that way you just ensure you're getting into all the nooks and crannies and don't leave any of the dark varnish anywhere. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be staining the interior of this piece as well. And just to make sure that I can get um, all of that old varnish off, I'm just releasing the levers that allow the drop down lid to um, fall down without damaging the hinges. Um, those are just little support brackets basically. And I'm just releasing one at a time on each side and sanding underneath and then I will put them back once all that dark varnish has been sanded off. So 
So you'll notice here that my sander looks slightly different. That's because I've changed the attachment on the head of it for a detailer part, which means I can get in all the nooks and crannies. If you don't have this type of sander, you can get really inexpensive mouse sanders, which are really good for accessing smaller compartments such as this one or for nooks and crannies and for detailing areas as well. And then for those really, really awkward to reach places, uh, you can't be a good old elbow grease. So I'm just using one of my sanding sheets from my Festool, folded in half, and that's just gonna get in all those tiny little crevices that my sander just can't reach. And whilst I'm working on the interior of this bureau, I'm going to go ahead and scuff sand all of those cute little cubby holes that you can see. Um, I'm not going to stain these. These are going to have a slightly different effect on them. So I'm just going to go ahead and scuff sand them with a 220 grit sanding pad. And I know if I don't show the feet, people will ask, how did you sand the feet? So I'm going to show you. Um, so basically I used a combination of my detailer attachment, which you can see me using now. That is a sort of a triangle shape, so it's really good for getting in corners and accessing hard to reach areas. And I'm just going to do all of these sort of flat edges with that. Um, so the strut the, across the sort of uh, centre of it, the support, and the legs on the uh, either side where there's straight areas. I'm going to go ahead with that and just get as much of it off as I can. And then for those curved surfaces, I just did it by hand. There is no hack on that one, I'm afraid. It's just a little bit of elbow grease and patience, which uh, doesn't come naturally to me, I'm not gonna lie. Okay, so that's all the dark varnish completely gone. Whew. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is just lightly go over the entire piece with a much finer grit sandpaper. So this is a 120 grit, and that's just gonna close the grain and make it smoother. So this literally just took 10, 15 minutes or so because I just went over the entire piece with a, a, a finer grit paper. And like I said, it's just to smooth it down and stop it feeling rough and coarse. Okay, so we're all sanded out, ready to go. And the stain that I'm gonna use is Voodoo Gel Stain in Eau Naturelle. Gives you a really nice kind of bleached effect look, really sort of kind of lightens the wood and gives a lovely finish. So, I'm just gonna add some to a paper plate and I'm going to apply it with an applicator pad. I've already applied it to one side just to make sure that I liked it before I did it on camera. And by applying it onto a plate, first i'm just going to allow me to get a really nice even coverage on my applicator pad if i apply it straight on i'm just going to have like product in some areas and not others and it's not going to give me a very even application and i'm also going to use a mister bottle just to give a light spritz of water this is just normal tap water on the surface of the piece which will stop the stain being sucked into the wood quickly and drying out before I've got a chance to make it nice and smooth. So I'm just adding some to a plate like I just described and a really, really light spritz on the surface of this oak just because it is super dry and I don't want the wood to grip onto that stain before I've had a chance to work it in and make it nice and even. And this is also gonna reduce tide marks where I'm overlapping uh, my product. And like I say, it just stops it drying out too quickly. Um, and you'll notice as well that I'm working in small areas, so I'm not trying to do a huge area all at once. Again, to avoid the issues that I've just described. So I'm working in small areas i'm starting with the front leaf of the bureau and then i'll work my way around it exactly the same process on the top there i'm just working on the top next um, and again 
it had a light spritz of water before I applied my product and the great thing about Voodoo Gel Stain is that it is a water-based stain so you can add water to it if you want a more sheer coverage and it's also buildable so once I'd done one coat of this I then applied a second coat just to build up that coverage and to give a lighter finish. Okay, we'll fast forward because it was basically just repeating the same thing over the entire piece. Whilst I'm waiting for it to dry, you remember me saying that I had plans for the interior cubbies of this piece? Well, this is it. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to give it a pop of colour on the inside. And I'm using the colour Tide Pool in Silk All-in-One Mineral Paint. There's a couple of reasons I'm using silk. The first one is because there are some ink stains in those cubby holes and... Um, silk has a built-in stain blocking primer it also has a built-in top coat because those cubby holes were a lot of work painting in there I definitely don't want to have to top coat after I have painted two coats of paint on each cubby hole so this is going to save me a lot of work it's going to cut the hassle of having to top coat and it's super durable and I also love the colour tide pool Unfortunately, I don't know of any hacks or quicker ways to paint cubby holes um, than to do it this way and to add a little bit of patience into that. If you do know of any quicker ways or hacks, let me know in the comments. Um, to be honest, it was actually quite therapeutic covering up those ink stains and doing it this way and giving it that pretty pop of colour on the inside. The brush that I'm using is a small flat synthetic brush from Dixie Bell. It's a one inch brush, so it is perfect for getting in all those little corners and nooks and crannies. I'm also going to use the same colour to refresh the leather pad on the drop down lid of the Bureau. I'm just taping off a nice straight line to make sure that I've got some nice crisp edges. And I cleaned it at the very start, so that's already had a clean. Scuff sand with 220 grit sandpaper and then I can just go ahead and paint two coats of silk mineral paint in Typo. So I painted the leather pad last night and left it to dry overnight and I've actually just painted the second coat live on YouTube. I haven't done a YouTube live before. Um, so I thought I'd give it a go and did a little workshop tour. So if you want to go and see that, um, go and have a look. It was, it was strange, but I did it. Um, and um, I'm now going to paint the inside of the cubbies with a second coat of Tide Pool. That's just going to build up coverage. And um, obviously, because I did it last night, there are a couple of areas that I've missed. Although Tide Pool does cover really, really well, I just want to make sure that I haven't missed any spots and we get that really beautiful blue kind of greeny aqua colour um, for that pop of colour when you open the lid. I'm just using exactly the same technique as I did in the first instance when I painted the cubby holes, so I'm not going to dwell on this step too much, but I just wanted to do a little close-up and show you the difference between two coats and one coat. So you can see the difference totally changes the colour saturation and the coverage. We'll skip the rest of the cubby hole painting and we'll skip straight to the bit where I did a stencil on the drop down lid. So I'm using the silk screen stencils in the pattern botanical and I've cut up um, one of the sheets to, so that it gives me a little border stencil. Silk screw stencil have got an adhesive back in so it makes it really easy to do intricate patterns because your stencil isn't moving about all over the place. So I'm just smoothing that out and then I'm using a bit of the cut off bit just so that I don't get any of the paint overlapping the line and going onto my tide pool that I painted yesterday. Um, I'm using the colour Endless Shore for a little bit of a contrast which is a warm off white colour. And then I'm just using a stencil brush, it's quite a small stencil brush, just to apply a little bit of Endless Shore through the silkscreen stencil to give me that pattern. I'm using it in a traditional way, which is pouncing the brush 
over the surface. There are a couple of ways that you can use a silkscreen stencil, but I'm just using it this way for this time. And then I'm just going to repeat that pattern all the way around the edge of the bureau to give it a border. Just because this pattern is super teeny tiny and obviously I'd cut that strip down quite small, um, there were a couple of areas where I went over the edge of my stencil, but it's no big deal. If this happens, all you need to do is just grab your original colour, so in my case it's Tide Pool, get a really small artist brush and just touch up those areas, go over the top and it'll basically cover it and you'll never know they were there. So I'm just going to quickly tidy up those front facing edges of the cubby holes because I wanted those to be natural wood to match the rest of the piece. So I'm just taking a little piece of sandpaper and just sanding back over any pieces of tide pool that I've accidentally lapped over the edges just to give some ni nice neat lines. And now I've just got to seal everything I've done. So I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in flat. I'm using a blue applicator sponge with a slight mist of water on the surface. I've put some of the clear coat onto a paper plate. I just find it easier this way. And I'm just going to take my sponge and apply really even, smooth strokes across the surface. And that's going to seal my stain. I'm also going to go over the leather pad just to give it an extra layer of protection. I know silk has a built-in top coat and it's very durable, but obviously this is a writing desk and I imagine that it's gonna get some traffic. So there is no harm in adding an extra top coat over silk if you want to, just add that little bit of protection and give it a little bit more durability. In total, I applied three coats of clear coat over the bureau, inside and out and let it dry in between coats. It's much better to apply several thin coats of clear coat than it is to try and apply one or two really thickly. I used a little bit of Brasso and some steel wool to clean the original handles up and just buff them until they had a little bit of a shine to them and then added them back onto the piece once they were all nice and shiny. And the joy about using existing handles is that you don't have to drill new holes for different handles because you all know how much I hate doing that. And the final step was to use some Big Mama's Butter in my all time favorite scent, which is Orange Grove with a Lapity brush on the interior of the drawers. I left these a darker oak finish because I thought it was quite a nice contrast. So I'm just adding Big Mama's Butter, that revives the grain and gives a really nice scent. And here's a little close up of that wood grain, but now with a pale stain on it. There is the interior shot. I added the same stencil detail on the little cute drawer as well. And here's the final shot, got some plants out of the garden and made it look all pretty and soft. So there we go, that's what oat looks like stained with Eau Naturel Voodoo Gel Stain. I hope you liked how this little bureau turned out. Um, I love working on this one, really enjoyed it. And uh, make sure you're subscribing to my YouTube channel for more videos. And thank you for watching.